Inshallah, we have the Quran and then the Shaykh eat with us and the Matam and at the end we have Nazar today as well, tonight. Please send a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير المغضوب عليهم والظالين صدق الله العلي العظيم MashaAllah, beautiful Quran recitation by Brother Nasser. Please, for his health and his family, please send a loud salawat.
اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد و عجن فا so the months is the months of safar and this is the, the two there are riwayat for the martyr of, of our second beloved our second imam imam hasan mushtaba alayhi salam and one riwayat is for the seventh of safar and one is for the 28th of safar so so tonight uh, we commemorating for his martyrdom and the sheikh is from uh, Sheikh Fazil Al Sayyid is from from Bulawang is with us and inshallah we benefit from his lecture and may I ask the sheikh to come to the majlis and please for his health please send a loud salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Assalamu Is that okay? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Let me give it to the. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just warm. Just warm water. Yeah. بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا صاحب السكينة المدفونة في المدينة المبعوثة رحمة للعالمين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيت طيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين وبعد ولعنة دائما على أعداء مجمعين من الآن إلى يوم كيام الدين قال جل جلا في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Distinguished scholars, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa hadhlum Allah. Ajurna ajurakum on the martyrdom of the Sipt, awwal al Sipt of the Holy Prophet, and of course, Ali bin Abi Talib bin Fatima al Zahra, and of course, that is Imam Hassan al Mushtaba al Zakiyan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his ziyara in the dunya, wa shafa'atu fi al akhira. The verse in which I read is from, of course, Surah Al-Shams, where God says that this nafs, wa nafsin wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fa juraha wa taqwaha qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. Basically, God is saying here, this nafs that I've given you, that it's made in a perfect form. Because why is it made in a perfect form? Because it has been connected, if left in its pure form, to the futra. The futra will always push an individual or lead an individual to that of his creator because we were all tested back in the Alam Al-Anwar and when God said Alastu bi Rabbukum and we said Bala, yes when God tested am I not your Lord we all said yes we might not remember this but alhamdulillah all of you here went a further step and when he tested you on the love of the Ahlul Bayt you all passed and that's why alhamdulillah you were born on this madhab but the most important thing is not just be on, on, to stay on this madhab, but is to have the nafs that the Ahlul Bayt want. The nafs that they want in purity. And it's very important that we, in order to tame the nafs, to keep the nafs in its position, we have to, uh, it's like a tarbiyah. It's We have to kind of discipline. We have to feed it what it wants and keep away from, a dozen, from things that it really will affect it, will, keep, will bring vices to itself. Because the best thing, the way I can explain how the nafs is, is that all of us have, have def definitely got this self-ego 
inside of us. Because if you look at the, even at the wording of the Quran, the word anfus, and it's always usually, or nafs, it's usually directed to an individual or a, a group of people. While the word ruh is used in plural form. Why is it so? Because every single one of us here, our nafs differs. Some might be, subhanAllah, higher towards God, and others, God forbid, as the Quran says, وَرَدَنَّهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ The lowest of low. How is this happening? It's because that individual has either moved away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, moved away from what God has ordained fit for my nafs to remain perfect, and, and that's why this nafs, at the end of the day, is not filled up with this purity. Because at the end of the day, with all that you make in this world, the most important factor that God will buy back in the end is your nafs. You think about this. Inna la shtara min al mu'minin an fusuhum wa amwalhum bin lahum al jannah. So, first thing that God buys back first is your nafs. The first thing he's ask you about is this nafs worthy of being brought back? Honestly, imagine if I give you something now, something that's you, that is very valuable. And I say to you, look after this. And then I've, I've, time goes past, days go past, months, years, and I ask you, can I, that amana, can I have it back now? And you give it back to me <laughs> in, a worth, in a state that's not worth anything anymore. How would you feel? Well, God's going to be a, a good trading system for you. This nafs, he's given it to you. He expects it to be in a pure state. And that's why if we can go further, we know that the nafs is directly into three types and alhamdulillah no one here has got nafs al-ammara thank these are all lovers of Ahlul Bayt but you have nafs al-lawama the blaming self but and of course we are trying to get to the stage of nafs al we wish we can do that the ashab of Imam Hussein definitely got to nafs al we wish we get to, to this stage we, we hopefully try to get it but we, we're saying we can't we, I'm saying sorry I'm not saying you can't do it because we know people like Sulman al-Farsi, Abu Dhar, al-Maqdad, you know, all, uh, these people, uh, Malik al-Ashtar, you know, all these people got to this, this great position that the love of, of the people of Ahl al-Bayt got to. And if you check out their history beforehand, what was it? What was Abu Dhar before we come to, the, to this position? Do you know what Abu Dhar was? A pirate. Honestly. And look at the position he got. Abu Dhar got to the stage where the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدٌ أَنْ يُنْذُرُ إِلَى زُهُدْ عِيسَى إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ فَأُنْذُرُ إِلَى أَبُ ذَار If you want to look at the asceticism of Isa, Isa, son of Maryam, then look into who? Abu Dhar. What's this? Why is this so? Because they knew the valuability of the nafs. But the nafs can only be pure when you set the foundation. And that's why... In this verse that I read, it says, God aflaha min zakaha. First of all, the, in the Arabic word, and the Samah the Sheikh and the people that, the word that a person that works into the ground or works the field is called a fallah. The one who works in the fields, cleans, is paid in, in agriculture. So, what, this makes sense when it comes to the self. You know why? Because you have to get rid of all the pests, you've got to get rid of all the weeds. You got to go this tazkiyah before you can even plant the virtues of it. Because if you don't have the right land, it's like planting a, a virtue, a great seed, into clay. No way, it's, it's not going to work. And if you understand what I'm trying to get to, the Holy Prophet, وآله, when he first came to the people, what did he do? Before he could even teach them the kitab, and the hikmah, he had to do what? Tazkiyah. He had to get rid of all the Arabs like George Barnett Shaw. You know what the Arabs, how bad the Arabs were? The Arabs, according to George Barnett Shaw, were animals in a human form. That's how bad they were. And that's why God had to send them the best of his creation and none other than the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Allah. So when we look at this, we have to, so the, basically the tazkiyah 
is a purification and reformation stage that we in, in need in order to start planting the virtues. And even the Quran, the Quran will make no sense to you if you don't have this pure nafs. The Quran, when, when the first, if you read the first of the Quran, when, the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alif, Lam, Mim, Dhalik, Al Kitab, Wala, Raiba, Fi, Hudan, Lil Muttakin. That this book here can only be for what? The Muttaki. See what all I'm saying here? That's why people sometimes you say, you can read a verse in the Quran to them and it has no effect on it. It has no effect. While people that understand the Quran, they read sometimes the verse, they go, wow. You know, that verse was talking about math, uh, example like hell. You know, this is my end if I disobe uh, go disobedience of God. And then I read the verses of like heaven, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, subhanAllah. Is it worth me here for temporary relaxation and what awaits for me in the hereafter? And Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib salam, says the beautiful thing that this nafs of yours, that you should never sell it for anything except heaven. You know, this is the same Amir al-Mu'mineen that said to the dunya, dunya hurri ghayri. <laughs> go, go, and, go and deceive someone else. Go. So when we look at the tazkiyah of the, of the self, First, I have to look at myself first, because my brothers and sisters, if you need the biggest weapon to find out if the problem is you, all you need to do is look into a mirror. Honestly, if you need to know who you are, you don't need anyone. You know yourself better than anyone else. Bali insan ala nafsihi basira. You you know yourself. Believe me, believe me. If I if we leave everything away, leave all this. Uh, forces that of our desires onto the side. I, you know yourself. You can look into the mirror, look through your, and that's why they say some of the the sayings they say that the eyes are the the eyes are the soul. So I mean, the eyes are the gateway to the soul. It's true, 100. percent When you look at yourself, you know what vices you've got in here. But Subhanallah, unlike the physical problems we have in our body, the internal spiritual vices like hasad, like uh, namima, like ghiba, like you know, all these things that, that we have, so we, don't, we don't really are uh, unaware of or we, we take them for granted. Honestly, when do you ever notice someone goes to a sheikh or to a sayyid, it lays down like you know, when they go to a psychologist and say, you know what, sheikh, no, I'm suffering from ghiba or I'm suffering from uh, hasad, envy. They don't do that. All the, these days, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that these days the, the sheikh or the sayyid or the imam, you know what they're used for? Majalis or a wedding or you know, a fatha. That's all they're used for. But when, when you can go and speak to the imam or to the sheikh, they got ways, they got, they got the words. Words, my friends, are the greatest ever weapon against the nafs. The Quran, what is it? Words, but they're divine words. The words of the Ahlul Bayt, words, they still affect you. But to, to get rid of this, to make sure that you have this affection, you have to make sure that there's no impurities in yourself. It was said that once that a man was, he usually goes to the park and you know, he goes for his normal walk. Sometimes he goes there, sits on the bench, reads a book. One day he sat on the bench. And then all of a sudden he got up and he started to walk. All of a sudden he noticed, because people used to walk their dogs there. All of a sudden he noticed that when he's walking, these dogs that with their owners, they turned around, they started chasing him. And the, and the owners are trying to pull him, pull the dogs back and they started chasing him. Then it happened to be that another man came, saw what was going on, ran over to the man and said to him, you know, because the man started to run. He goes, hold on a sec, hold on a sec, I'll help you. He goes, look, the dogs are after me. He goes, just hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. He turned around. He grabbed it. And there was a piece of food stuck on his, where he was sitting on the bench, on his, on his, on his pants. And that attracted the dogs. What's this got to do with, with me? It's got to, a lot to do with you. When there's something inside of you that's a vice that the shaitan finds attractive, then that's, that's basically what happens to you. That when you bring these into yourself, that you, you become the attractive attraction for the shaitan. Unless 
On the opposite, you have the virtues of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why there's a beautiful verse in the Quran, if I can remember it. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna ladina taqo, idha massahum, ta'ifan min shaytan What happens? Tadhakkaru. If mass is something very light, if something slightly of the shaytan comes, they what? They remember God Almighty. They, they, their remembrance system is operating all the time. And that's why the remembrance system is the greatest thing. Besides your prayer system, the prayer is used as, as also a system of purifying yourself. But, but the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the best dhikr is the salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah, Allah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Muhammad. When it comes to dhikr, everything, even your dua, every dua mahjuban an sama hatta yasalli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah, thank you, my son. And the dhikr, you can remember, that's why the best of ta'kibat after prayer is the ta'kibat of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. That's the best. Every single scholar, every single marja have said that the best ta'kibat is the tasbih of Fatima. And that's why in the Quran, when you look at Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ladhina amanu uthkuru Allah dhikran kathiran wa sabbihu bukratan Beautiful. Do you know the dhikr, if you remember this, God is the angels. They they come first of all, it takes you out of the dhulamat in the nur, out of the darkness into light. He makes the angels do pray for you. And then what happens? He was with the mu'mineen, merciful. All this from what? Dhikr. So, when it comes to this, to understand the importance of that, firstly you have to find out what the vices within myself. You know, Isa bin Maryam has a beautiful saying. He says, God gave me the ability to cure the sick. God gave it to me. And God gave me the ability to bring the dead back to life. He goes, but God never, with all this power, I could not have the ability to fix those that had the disease of the soul. Imagine this. Isa says this. That with all this, I still, anyone that was an ahmak, anyone that had the, the, the sickness of the soul, I could not fix him. Because you have to diagnose yourself. When I go to a doctor, usually when you go to a doctor, as much as a good doctor it is, unless I walk in there with my, you know, with blood spurking out of my hand, then he, then he knows that something's going on. But I usually sit in the doctor and the doctor says, first thing he asks me, what's wrong with you? If he he asks me, I'm the patient, but he asks me, what is wrong with me? So I have to tell him what is wrong with me. Yes, God forbid I do this, I do that. You know, I've got something wrong with me. And this feels, makes me feel upset. Because what happens, my brothers and sisters, as human beings, as followers of the Bayt, we can point out the faults of everyone else except the faults in ourselves. Honestly, that per see what that person just did? He did riba. How many times have you done riba? Uh, you know, that guy is doing something like, for instance, like haram. You know, all, all this, we, we can judge everyone else, but we don't judge ourselves. And that's why I remember the story that a man and his wife, they moved next door to this neighborhood. And then what happened was his wife's window faced the neighbor. So she can see the neighbor pull out her washing every single day. And then she would wash the dishes and then her husband would walk in and say, look at this lady, she can't even clean her clothes properly. Look, look, at, look there's bits of dirt left on the clothes. She mustn't have a good washing machine or she's not using the right soap. The husband looked at her first time, he let her go. The second day, again, she tells the husband, look at this lady. She hasn't learned. Shall I go even tell her? The husband goes, no, 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 don't, don't. I'll fix it up. And then, so he goes. The third day, she goes, my God, did you speak to the lady? Look how good her clothes are. He said, no, I didn't speak to the lady. All I did was clean the windows. All I did was clean the windows. So basically, that's what, she was judgmental of the other person, but the actual problem was with her. Your windows were dirty, your eyesight was dirty. 
And that's what happens, and that's the difference of what a mu'min. A mu'min, the difference between someone that has nathra and someone that has basira. The basira of the, of the, of the, the true akil is what you see, everything. Imam Muhammad al-Baqir says it beautiful. He says, every, each and every one of you has four eyes. You say, no, I don't have two eyes. No, you have four eyes. You have the two eyes, these are the two eyes that see everything worldly. And the two eyes of the heart, meaning the hakil, that see whatever God has ordained to see. That's the basira. Whichever one beats the other, that's what type of vision you have. If you let the ones of the intellect win, the kuwal aqli you win over you, then you'll see everything. You'll see everything for the beauty of God. Your eyes become the eyes of God. Your hands become the hands of God. Not physically. I'm saying like they do everything only for God. Your legs will only go to the places of God. This is to understand the importance of having this nafs zakiya. And on this point, to understand that Amir al-Mu'minin talks about this beautiful saying. He says that the... He says, Ala wa inna, ala wa inna min al-bala al-faqata. That from, from the bala is poverty. And then he goes, wa ashadda min al-faqata. He goes, marad al-badan. And worse than this is the sickness of the body. Or he goes, wa ashadda min marad al-badan, marad al-qalb. And he goes, and the worst of this the sickness of the body is the sickness of the heart. When I say heart, I don't mean this heart here. And I don't mean a physical heart. According to the narrations, the heart means the aqil. I'll tell you an example. When Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, for instance, he says that, Qalb al wa lisanuhu. The heart of a fool is behind his tongue. There's no heart behind, uh, behind anyone's tongue. And then, he says, and then he says the opposite. He says, But the, 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 the tongue of a wise man is behind his heart. The heart here means your intellect, al-haqil. And this is very important because what we're going to talk about shortly, the zakiya and that of the haqil is related to the great person that we remember today, Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. Because we need a purifying agent. To purify ourselves, we need purifying agent. The best to purify an agent have to be something that themselves are pure and something that they themselves can never be magnificent, like the Quran and of course the Ahlul Bayt. The thakal lane or thick lane. If you hold these two, these are your purifying agents. To hold on to the Holy Quran and to hold on to the Ahadith of the Ahlul Bayt. And the ahadith of Ahl al-Bayt are the most important thing if you want to be a follower of the Ahl al-Bayt. When Imam Ali alayhi salam talks Kumail, he goes, Ya Kumail, la ta'khuz illa anna tukun minna. Do you know what this means? When he tells Kumail, oh Kumail, if you want to be like us, only take of us. I don't need to go to some philosopher, I don't need to go to Rumi, I don't need to go to all these, all these, all these people that are bringing into our religion now. This other hadith, because it sounds like Habibi, no. Ahl al Bayt, Quran, full stop. That's it. If there was anything better, Amir al Mu'mini would have told Kumail. He would have told him. SubhanAllah, you don't know what you have. Lovers of Ahl al Bayt, you don't know the ni'mi that your God has given you. So Imam Hassan al Mushtaba is known as also as Zaki. He's your purifying agent. Like the rest of the Ahl al Bayt, he, in your life, to learn about his life, to implement that into, your, into yourself, then you hopefully tazkiyat the nafs. And then when you get the tazkiyat the nafs, you find that every verse in the Quran, when it's related to the nafs, the word muflihun is on to the end of it. Always, every single verse that you can think about in the Quran when it deals with the, being successful, and, and the nafs has the word Muflihun on it. Everyone. You know, one, one example, for instance, Ya ayyuladina amina usbiru, sabiru, rabitu, wattakullah, la'allakum tuflihun. Every verse, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm ulaika ala hudun min rabbihim, ulaika humul muflihun. Everything has to do with the, with tazkiz and nafis, huh? uh, and, and, the, and the word successful is only given to people who 
look after their soul. Imam Hassan al Mushtaba, subhanAllah, this person that is honestly, I was just talk, talking to the brothers as I came here, one of the most oppressed Imams. After Amir al Mu'mineen, the most oppressed Imam is Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. The most attacked Imam is Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. So, subhan, you look how much, how many false hadiths the Abbasi uh, dynasty, the tyrant Abbasi cursed dynasty did against Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Because it was, if you look back in history, it was the, the seed of Imam Hassan al Mushtaba that actually stood up against Bani Abbas. That's why they hated. Why do you reckon Aisha hated Imam Hassan al Mushtaba so much for? When we, when we talk soon about the mark of the, the Battle of Jamal, you'll know why. Yeah, this, they all hated him because of the connection to Amir al-Mu'mineen, but because of his stance in making sure, like his father, because his father says, you know how much we love, we love Imam Ali alayhi salam, how much we love him? When Imam Ali alayhi salam talks to Imam Hassan, he says, وَجَدْتَكَ بَعْضِ بَلْ وَجَدْتَكَ I you know, he said, I saw part of you in me. Then he says, no, no, no. I saw all of you in me. Imam Ali alayhi salam is saying, everything you see in me, you see in Imam Hassan al mushtaba You know what that means? That when Imam Ali alayhi salam has ilmul kitab, has the knowledge of the book, that means Imam Hassan al mushtaba has ilmul kitab. Now, and then when the Holy Prophet from a very young age, he wanted to show the Adama of Imam Hassan al mushtaba alayhi salam. First of all, you've got to understand, in his appearance, in how we look at Ali al-Akbar, when we, in the battle, we say that Ali al-Akbar represented, or in his akhlaq, in his character, the way he talked, the looks, like the Rasulullah. Imam Hassan al mushtaba was that. You know Imam Hassan al mushtaba Everything, his character, the way he looked, the way he talked, they were, it was exactly like the Holy Prophet. And that's why when we hear the saying, before Imam Hussein was even born, you know, the saying that, that where we say the famous saying, Al Hussein um, um, wa min Al Hussein wa Habballah min Habbal Hussein. Hold on a sec. This came to Imam Hassan before it came to Imam Hussein. Do you know this? And remember, with all due respect to the Adama of Imam Hussein, you got to remember, Imam Hassan was his Imam. Do you know this? You know, because people put down, oh, Imam Hassan did the Sulh with Muawiyah. He said, so what? Do you know what this Sulh did? If you, if you, if you were actually a Mawali of Ahlul Bayt, you understand when the Holy Prophet said, Al Hassan al Hussein Imamain Kama or Ka'ada. Do you know what that means? That means if Imam Hassan was sitting in his house and did nothing, I, stood, I respect him and I, I, I follow every single mood that he did. But we have this mentality is that because Imam Hassan didn't jump up and do a thawrah like Imam Hussein did, then I mean, he's not he's in the category. La Habibi, he's better than him. In fact, he's better than him. Because when it comes to Imama, there's no age group. When Imam Ali alayhi salam passed away, Imam Hussein was... Do you know how the, difference, the age group difference between Imam Hussein? And Imam Hassan, one hadith says six months, the maximum one year. Maximum one year. But when the, when the Imam goes from one Imam to the Imam, it's God who chooses. It was given to who? Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Imam Hussain, just like you were sitting here, Imam Hussain would sit there and listen to the khutbah of the Imam of his time. Do you understand this? Do you not understand the adama of who Imam Hassan al Mushtaba is? One narration will show you how much it is. Because remember everything I said before at the start, that the ruling thing in your body is your intellect. When your intellect rules, you will always come to that of the right path. That's why when God Almighty tested Prophet Ayyub with the devil, the God said to the devil, you can take everything off him except two things. The two things are, first his intellect, al-aqil, and the second one, his lisan, his tongue. One, because that's moved for the dhikr. And secondly, his if God takes his intellect away from you, that's your hujjah. You've you got nothing to fight the devil with. Do you understand? 
Now, when I told you this now, listen to this saying about Imam, about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when he talks about Imam Hassan al mushtaba He says, In kana al aqil rajal, lakana al Hassan ibn Ali. Do you know what that means? If the Hakil was in fact a human being, it would be none other than Al Hassan ibn Ali. Do you know what that means? Every decision that Imam Hassan al Mushtaba did was perfect. Came straight exactly what the Hakil was made because the Hakil was only made to do what? Like Imam Jafar al Sadiq. Al-Hakil, ma'abda bi rahman abda bi rahman It's whatever the, what God is worshipped with and what, what heaven is given with. It's through the Hakil. When God created the Hakil, He said, Wallahi, bi'izzati wa jalali, in my whole might, that I have not created anything greater and more a'adham and more perfect than the Hakil. And He told the Hakil, come forth, it came forth. It told it to go back, it went back. This is the Hakil, and who represents this? Your Imam, Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Do you want something better than that? This is this will show you that. So everything the Imam did was what through the intellect. When he did the sulh, I don't want to get a bit to the sulh because the sulh needs a whole lecture by itself. You know, to show you that this Imam went through so much oppression. Imam Hussein had companions. Who did Imam Hassan have? Who did Imam Hassan have? His own cousin took three or four thousand of his soldiers, Muawiyah bought him, gave him money, his own cousin, huh? Own cousin, left him. Imam Hassan was mazloom, was oppressed outside and was mazloom inside the house. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he can go to his wife, can he? He can go to Rabab, he can go to Layla. Who did Imam Hassan go to? Jahda? Huh? Who? You tell me? I'm telling you, this Imam is the most oppressed Imam. You know, when someone walks into him and says, Assalamu alaikum, ya, ya mudhill al mu'mineen. You know, a person that you know, who is a great companion, walks in and says, Oh, oh, peace be upon you, the one that degraded the mu'mins. In front of who? Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Huh? Shame. Shame. And even though he repented, the heart broken. But yet Imam Hassan al mushtaba had a mission to keep this you know, religion alive, to keep the teachings alive. You know, just, I, I want to point how much power you think when Imam Ali salam, was martyred in what? 40 AH. So I've, in those 10 years of the sulh, going through the, the, the period of, of the conditions, but there's one condition to show you how much power Imam Hassan al mushtaba had and that was of course when he did the sulh there was one agreement that he did with Muawiyah Muawiyah had to pay Imam Hassan al mushtaba 1 million dirhams a year do you know that? that was one thing he had to pay him and of course Imam Hassan being Kareem Ahlul Bayt do you know Imam Hassan because we always think about the the karma of Imam Hassan which is very good Imam Hassan gave all his wealth three times all of it out and twice half of it. Imam Hassan never let anyone in Medina from his, the money that he would ne, never let anyone in Medina sleep without, without, on an empty stomach. Never. The karam, the karam of Imam Hassan and the money that he would get from this Lahim Muawiyah, he would give it to the people of Medina. They said that one day that Muawiyah hated, you know, always Medina was always the hatred for Bani Umayyah. Always in Bani Abbas because it, it was always a stronghold for the love of Ahlul Bayt. So one day Muawiyah comes to Medina, no one comes to welcome him. No one comes to welcome him. So one of the companions, I think his name was Saad, comes out and Muawiyah says to him, Where's all the people of Medina? How come they haven't come to welcome me? And then he said, They, they don't want to welcome him. He goes, Well, haven't they got camels? Or haven't got donkeys? Listen what Sa'ad says. <laughs> Sa'ad gets him, yeah, they did. They left him in the battle of Uhud and Badr when, when you were on the other side, when your, oh, sorry, when your ancestry was fighting with the Mushrikeen, they left him over there. In other words, we, we, don't worry, we, we, we know who you are and there's no one's going to come and meet you here. You've, you've always been this religious, this Sajr al-Khabitha, Bani Umayyah, this, this infection, 
that went on to, to do the greatest you know, atrocities unto the Ahlul Bayt. And then of course came the Malain of Bani Abbas. I just want to get one more point before I go into the Masiba. And that is of course, since I brought about, about the Sajaha of Al Hassan ibn Ali, this great First of all, if you go back and you look at every single war that Imam Hassan fought with Imam Ali, who was the flag bearer? Who was it? Who was it? Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan. Do you know what the flag bearer means? It means you're the, the stronghold. Just like Abu Fadl Abbas was to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. All the time, the flag bearer there was, of course, Imam Hassan al mushtaba So when the battle of Jamal came, and they saw those people on the other side. They saw Talha, Zubair, Aisha. They saw him on the other side. You know, one guy comes to the Imam, he says, I, I don't know who, who's to, who to fight. Yeah, look at these people. They're supposed to be religious people. And then the Imam says, he goes, al, al, he goes al, al, al haq wal batila ya'rafu bin nas. A'raf al haq, ta'raf ahlaha. What he means is that people themselves, you know, outside people, don't represent truth or falsehood. Know what truth is, know what falsehood is, and that's why al-haq, when we read the translation, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ مَا تَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْوَلَيَّتْ مُحَمَّدْ وَأَلِي مُحَمَّدْ Allahum salli ala Muhammad. That's al-haq. Al-haq, like the Holy Prophet has said, عَلِي وَالْمَعَ الْحَقْ وَالْحَقَّ مَا عَلِي Everything is haq. To know the position, the, sorry, the position of Ali bin Abi Talib, he said that if he saw all Bani, he say Bani Adam on one side, and he saw Amir al Mu'minin on one side, know that this is the haq. Don't worry about this. We don't care about numbers. The Quran tells you this. Have you read the, the words of the Quran, what it means? It means, it means everything, that the majority is always wrong, the majority is always disbelief. Everything. Then he says, Fi'atan kalilan ghalabat fi'atan kathira bi'idlila. But a small group, we're always, the, a small group of being faith. So when, when, to bring down, people were dying. This is the first ever civil war, the camel war. First ever. What, he, what Imam Ali alayhi salam does, he, he calls Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya. Muhammad ibn Hanafiya was a very strong fighter. They said that Muhammad ibn Hanafiya, if he wanted to punish someone, he'll get a, you know, the steel rod. And st imagine that, steel rod, and he'll bend it over him so he couldn't move. That's how strong he was. He says, Muhammad, come here. See that spear, take it. See that camel, bring it down. And what they did, the camel was to them, like the calf, you know, when, when Musa left Bani Israel and they came back and he saw him watching the Hajjal, the calf, that camel became now the calf of those people, the, the people that are fighting against the Imam at their time. They even, Hadith says, they even were taking the waist from the camel and, and wiping it on their face. So he knew to bring down, to stop the war, we had to bring down the camel. Muhammad ibn Hanafi went forth. They had protected first line, second line, third line, all around the camel. He went, he's brave, very brave. He went first on the side, couldn't break it. On the other side, couldn't break it. He went several times on the other position, couldn't break it. Comes back to his father, he says, Dad, I can't do it. I can't break it. There's too many people. Hassan, come here. There you go. Take this. That camel, bring it down. You th we think when an imam goes forward, the imam comes back without victory, especially someone like Imam Hassan. No way. No way. This is the son of Ali bin Abi Talib, salam. even the other son, but this is someone special. So, of course, Imam Hassan goes forth. After a while, the camel comes down. Hala Muhammad ibn Hanafi is a bit upset. I couldn't do it. Imam Hassan salam, did. He says, Oh, my son Muhammad, don't worry. Anta, you are the son of Ali. But Hassan is the son of Rasulullah, of the son of Fatima the Zahra. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salli ala Muhammad. Muhammad. Now you understand that why that the purity of Imam Hassan al-Mushba. And after everything that Imam Hassan went through, it was sad.
that this beloved Imam of ours, it came to the end where everyone abandoned him and Muawiyah tried to poison him several times. You know, we have a hadith that up to three times the Imam was trying to be, the, the Imam was nearly poisoned. Eventually, Muawiyah takes the poison from a person he got from Rome. And it was the most lethal of poison. And your beloved Imam, Imam Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam, even after fasting all day, you would want to break your fast. You would want to break your fast on something that was at least light, delicious, pure. But the Malayin Jorda gave the Laban to Imam Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam. And after he drank it, it was that powerful. The Imam knew. He said, Oh, cursed lady, you have poisoned me. The Imam fell down. He said, Go and call my brother Hussein. And it was said that Imam Hussein came rushed. He said, Akhi, what have they done to you? Akhi, Akhi Hassan, what have they done to you? And the hadith says that the, it wasn't long that the poison went through the body and then after a while the poison got that strong my brothers and sisters for Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam he started to spew out his liver into a bowl that's how much the poison had affected his beloved body and while he was staying there spewing they heard a noise they heard a noise and he said, Oh, Akhi Hussein, please put that bowl away. Why, why, my brother, why? He goes, Because I can hear my sister Zainab coming. <laughs> Zainab is coming. I don't want her to see me in this position. I don't want to see the bits and pieces in me. And then, of course, Zainab comes in and says, Akhi Hassan, what have they done to you? And then the emotions started coming on. And then what happened is, Imam, Imam Hassan grabbed both, with this, with the, with just with his amount of power he had left, he grabbed Al Hussein. And he said to him, Oh, Abu Abdullah Al Hussein, you're crying for me now. <laughs> you're comforting me now. Oh, Zainab, you're comforting me now. But who's going to comfort you, Abu Abdullah Al Hussein? No, and then he says those famous words, La yomaka yomaka ya Abu Abdullah. Uh, Zahra, lament of you, for one of your sons is buried in Karbala, and one is in Medina. One is close to you, O Zahra, and one is far away. One will be poisoned by Jordan, and the other one killed by Yazid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all to hasten the reappearance of Imam al Hujjah alayhi salam. We ask him, Ya Allah, and nakshif hadi al ghummata an hadi al ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and la tukhrajna min hadi al dunya hatta tarda an hadi. We don't take us from this world except that he is pleased with us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon ourselves and our beloved souls that have passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the ziyar of the Ahlul Bayt in this dunya and their intercession in the hereafter. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al arwah allati hallat bi fanaik. Alayka assalamu Allah minni abadan ma bakit wa baki al layla wa al nahar. Wala jahra Allah akhil ahdi minni li ziyar to come together. Assalamu ala al Hussein. وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين والسلام عليك of course to his brother أبو فضل عباس وعلى عكيل على عكيل عفوا عكيل زينب ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات Thank you.
going on first comes. يا حسن حسن مالك حسن 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 تقبلها منكم شال حبيب حسن أفران أحسن شيخنا العزيز أحسن حسن على هذا حبيب هل بيطاولا هل حبيب سيد الحمد لله سوري سوري جود جود سيد جود 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 I'm sorry please حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود ويا المهدي ننصب ماتم اكبر ظل مدينة ويا المهدي ننصب ماتم اكبر ظل مدينة ويا المهدي ننصب ماتم اكبر ظل مدينة بارك الله فيك Listen to me please جزاك الله خير Just looking for one hit not twice مأجور إن شاء الله حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود ويا المهدي ننصب ماتمك برض المدينة ويا المهدي ننصب ماتمك برض المدينة أمل يا المجتبى ورجوه عدنا وندري ما يخيب باكر من يجي الغايب جرح كل مؤمن يطيب تشرق على البشر شمسه شمس الباطل تغيب تشوف الناس يوم بعيد واحنا شوفه قريب لو طول قدومه ابقى هم تاني يوم يوسف دهر من جب غابته لابد يجينا حين الغايب يعود نبني قبره كردود حين الغايب يعود ابني قبره كردود ويا المهدي ننصب ماتمك برض المدينة ويا المهدي ننصب ماتمك برض المدينة ثارك عايش بباله عن عيونه ما غاب حين ليوصل القبرك يخضر تحت التراب حين ليوصل القبرك يخضر تحت التراب يجيك بمرهم دموع يطيب بك الصواب يجر سهام من نعشك يداوي كبدك الذاب ينادي ودمع مسجوم يا عمي يا مسموم ينادي ودمع مسجوم يا عمي يا مسموم ينحب وبحسرته يصفج سارة بيمينه ينحب وبحسرته يصفج سارة بيمينه ويا المهدي ننصب معتمك برض المدينه حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبرك ردود ويا المهدي ننصب معتمك برض المدينة ويا المهدي ننصب معتمك برض المدينة حقيقة هذي أنظرها مو من نسج الأوهام لابد باكر الغايب يحقق كل الأحلام عقب طول السفر يرجع ناشر سود الأعلام صوغ بيد جايب لك حنت أرز جسام صوغ بيد جايب لك حنت عرز جسام جايب عين دمعة شايل بيد شمعة ناك الدنيا كلها تضوي من غير الجبينة 
ويا المهد ننصب ما اعتمك برض المدينة حين الغايب حين الغايب يعود نبني قبر كردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبر كردود ويا المهد ننصب ما اعتمك برض المدينة ويا المهد ننصب ما اعتمك برض المدينة مشهد قبرك المظلم عن المهدي ما فات بور العتره مهد ومشتضن ينساها هيهات بقي اجداد من يوصل يرد يبني المزارات قبب اربع يعليها ويا ثمن منارات قبب اربع يعليها ويا ثمن منارات من يفتح مضيفة بالروضة شريفة تزد الواد وكل ما انتهل بالفرحة عنا ويا المهد ننصب ما تمك برض المدينة حين الغايب يعود نبني قبر كردود حين الغايب يعود نبني قبر كردود هم عندك خبر يا فاطمة الزهرة بارك الله هم عندك خبر يا فاطمة الزهرة عن أول حبيب الهد ما وقبره وويلا يا يا سيدي وويلا هبروان ايه وويلا يا تعبانه وويلا يا يا سيدي يا ام الحسن قبر الحسن لليوم على تراب الكواكب كل مسجدهم وصوات السماء تصيح يا مظلوم جبريل المصابخ انقتل عبره وويلا يا بعد بعد وويلا يا ايه نفس الخانة وبحذر علي خانوه صعدة وعلم نابير وبحقد شتموه مذل المؤمنين اهل الغد ويروه وهو ابن الرسول
أهوى ويلا إيه ما همست هامي وطعنة الخنجاير ولا حيات كبد البلسم تودار لكن عالحسن يا موقف الأثار ما كان على بال صحب كمل ويلا وياي جاوب فاطمه ما ودمع الالم سجاياب تقول لي ذكرتني بهجمه الاصحاب عنهم اللي بتدفع علي الباب شلون ولا جني البت وبضعة الهادي سمعت فلان حرق ودار هي نادي والظلم الجرال جرع لأولادي والسم الظل ما ينقي لك حاجة ولا هوا ويلا يا إيه ما بطلت واني ولاني شاف دمعي على كسر الظل وعلم بعد ضلعي قلبي بكلمة سي الكربة لا يسعي ينوحي على الذب يحيل هالشي ما وصد رايه وويلا يا وبعد وويلا يا إيه نسأل فاطمة المظلومة عن اثنين يا هو اللي أشد من بين الإصوابين سهم كبد الحسن لوقا طيعنا الله يا سهم كبد سم كبد الحسن لوقا نحر حسين تقولي الاشد عندي ضلعة للغبرة يا ما هي الدعاء وشده نسأل فاطي ما المظلومة عن اثنين يا هو اللي أشد من بينيني لصوابين سم كبد الحسن لو قاطع نحر حسين قولي الأشد عندي الظل للغبرة قولي الحسن كان واخوي تيمة من حلت من تخف فوهمة ثالث يوم ظل حسين بو 
ظليمة واخوته مذبحة ما ظل لي حضرة جزاك الله خير يا حسن 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 يا بے خطا مارا گیا سے تے رسول دوسرا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا وا حسن سب پا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا وا حسن سب زقبا زہر سے ٹکڑ جگر خون سے کفن لال ہوا وا حسن سب زقبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا وا حسن خون گلتے ہوئے بھائی کو بہن نے دیکھا اور تڑپ کر یہ کہا اور تڑپ کر یہ کہا تیری غربت پہ بھائی تیری زینب فدا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا سبت رسول دوسرا ماں کے دکھ سے ابھی آزاد کہاں تھی زینب ہو گیا کیسا غزب ہو گیا کیسا باپ زندہ نہ رہا بھائی سوئے خلد چلا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا سبز قبا کر دیئے زہر حلا حل نے جگر کے ٹکڑے اور قاسم کے لیے اور قاسم کے لیے کم سے نیمے ہے یہ غم شام غریباں جیسا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا زبت رسول دوسرا سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا وا حسن سبز گھر سے ایک بار جنازہ جو نکل جاتا ہے کب وہ گھر آتا ہے کب وہ گھر آتا ہے کیسا تابوت ہے یہ لوٹ کے جو گھر آیا وا حسن سبز قبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا سبز قبا شہل اس وقت جو غازی کو نہ روکا ہوتا حشر ہو جاتا بپا حشر ہو جاتا بپا تیر آتے نہ جنازے پہ تمہارے مولا وا حسن سبز خبا بے خطا مارا گیا سیتے رسول دوسرا وا حسن سبز خبا یا حسین شام او شام شام او شام شام Brothers all together
शाम शाम ओ शाम शाम ओ शाम शाम ओ शाम ओ लेडी ऑफ लाइट यू हैव फेल ओ लेडी ऑफ लाइट यू हैव फेल द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टाइम वो शाम शाम ओ शाम शाम ओ शाम शाम ओ शाम ओ ग्रैंडफादर व्हाट शुड वी टेल यू of the hardship cruelty we suffered we were taken as displays in the streets your family ill treated and slandered oh grandfather if you could witness oh grandfather if you could witness how we were abused in sham sham oh sham The women and children tormented by the image of the heads on spears. Their faces and heads were uncovered. Their innocent faces in tears. Oh, grandmother, if you could look at. Oh, grandmother, if you could look at how we were helpless in shock. Sham, oh Sham, Sham, oh Sham, Sham, oh Sham. A little Rukia had suffered. She longed to return to Medina after Karbala, Kufa, and then Sham. She yearned for her sister Fatima. Oh, little Rukia, we miss you. Oh, little Rukia, we miss you. You died as a captive in Sham, Sham. Oh, Sham, Sham. Oh, Sham. Oh brother Abbas, a defender, we were left without any protection. Your courage and strength would have saved us from the tyrants who impose affliction. But the enemies brutally killed you. But the enemies brutally killed you. We were prisoner here in Sham. Sham, oh Sham. Sham, oh Sham. Sham, oh Sham. Oh my courageous lady Zainab, the religion of Islam was woken. Your sermons brought tears to people because of the words that were spoken. Oh Rasulullah, if you could listen. Oh Rasulullah, if you could listen to the way she spoke in Sham, Sham, oh Sham. A beloved Imam of a time, early brothers offer you condolence from the love in our hearts for you, Imam. These letters and words have been written. Oh, be decent up and look, Aya. Oh, be decent up and look, Aya. Invite us to meet you in Sham, Sham, oh Sham, Sham. 
مسائب شام ایک زاکر شام پہنچا دل میں لے کر یہ خیال کہ دیکھ کر بازار اور دربار پوچھوں یہ سوال سر برینا جب تھی زینب بے کفن زہرا کا لال اور سر پہ سورج چل رہا تھا جس گھڑی چونٹی کی چال فاصلہ بازار سے دل بار تک تے جب کیا وقت اس مشکل سفر میں کتنا بی بی کو لگا اور مرقد زینہ پہ پہنچا اور مجاور سے کہا اے مجاور مرقد زینب کے مجھ کو یہ بتا تے سفر دربار تک میں نے کیا اور وقت مجھ کو اس سفر میں چند ساتھ کا لگا اس ذرا سے فاصلے کو خاہر شبیر نے کتنی ساتھ میں کیا تے زینب دلگیر نے رو دیا رو دیا رو دیا سن کر مجاور یہ سوال اور یہ کہا کہ زاکر شبیر ہے سننے کا تجھ میں حوصلہ تیس گھنٹوں میں یہاں تک پہنچی بنت فاطمہ اور گرد تھے لاکھوں تماشا ہی ہزاروں عشقیا بازار کے منظر کو اور اپنے کھلے سر کو بھولی نہیں میں بازار کے منظر کو اور اپنے کھلے سر کو بھولی نہیں میں لٹھدار کے منظر کو سہجاد میں زینب ہوں میرے سر پیردہ کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سہجاد میں زینب ہوں میرے سر پیردہ کوئی نہیں بازار جفا مجمع ہے کوفیوں کا میرے چلنے کی جا کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سجاد میں زینب ہوں میرے سر پیردہ کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سجاد میں سر سے نو بار چھنی چادر بلوے میں نبی زادی پھر وائی گئی در در مل جائے ردا مجھ کو اور میری دعا کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سجاد میں زینب ہوں میرے سر پہ ردا کوئی نہیں بازار سجاد میرے دل کو یہ درد ستاتا ہے سر غازی کا نیزے سے جب خاک پہ آتا ہے سر میرا کھلا دے کے غم اسے بڑا کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سجاد سجاد چلوں کیسے لاکھوں ہے تماشائی یاد آتا ہے رہ رہے آباس میرا بھائی فریاد کروں کیسے اب تیرے سوا کوئی نہیں بازار جفا سجاد میں 
ਸਰ ਪੇਰ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਾਜ਼ਾਰ ਦਾ ਮਾਲੂਮ ਹੈ ਆਦਾ ਕੋ ਗਾਜ਼ੀ ਕੀ ਬਹਿਨ ਹੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਬੇਦਸਰ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਗਾਜ਼ੀ ਪਾਬੰਦੇ ਰਸਨ ਹੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਯਾਦ ਆਈ ਵਫਾ ਉਸ ਕੀ ਜਬ ਪਾਸ ਰਹਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਾਜ਼ਾਰੇ ਜਫਾ ਸਜਾਦ ਮੈਂ ਜ਼ੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਰ ਤੇ ਕਿਆ ਜਾਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਾਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਾਤਾ ਹੈ ਸੂਏ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਅਬ ਕੁਨ ਬਾ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਕਾ ਰਸੀ ਨੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਕੇ ਦੀ ਕਾਟੋ ਸੇ ਬਰਾ ਰਸਤਾ ਉਮਤ ਨੇ ਸਿਤਮ ਡਾਏ ਕਿਸਮਤ ਸੇ ਗਿਲਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ 